been through. And I, I can't even believe it's already, we're almost done with this beautiful day. I'm gonna start with the corporate table. I don't know that I've ever seen, and I do have a background in corporate. I worked for General Motors. My first degree is electrical engineering. I worked for them. I worked for Texas Instruments. <clears throat> and what you find in those big companies, as you find in most companies, is there's more people that are just there putting in the time. They do just enough to not get fired. You know, there, there's more people that do just enough to not get fired that absolutely love their job. And how sad is that? We have a table that loves what they do, loves the contribution, is profoundly good at it, and has been potentially at it since the very beginning. When Mr. Bernie Chua was in network marketing before, he knew that he could do it better. And if you know you can do it better, then you probably have uh, an obligation to do that. Aren't we all supposed to make the world better? So he's got the patents, he's got the processes, you know, and I asked him, would you do anything different? And, he, well, he, he basically said that they, they probably would have looked into a little better how the compensation plan went. Because whatever you create, someone's going to take advantage of it. And, and that happened. You know, there are people that will find the holes, and so they had to redo the compensation plan. And good. We need the company to be around. And then I asked them about competition. No, we really don't have any of that because we've got the patents. Wouldn't it be nice to have the best coffee in the world with no competition? And now we're winning awards again and again and again. And then it's a family business. Bernie said, we want everybody here to be part of the family. Notice we call it the Organo family. Because we are a family. And you look at how well we get along because we're all on the same purpose. He's got his family in there, Shella, helping out nonstop. Shannon, I always told my kids my number one job was to keep them safe. And they didn't always like that. But I made sure I did it. And you do that as well as anything I've ever seen. So thank you for keeping us all safe. Christelle, I don't know if, if you ever sleep, but 24-7, not that I message you at 2 o'clock in the morning, but it seems whenever I message Christelle, I get a message back. Within minutes, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody that responsive. And Marta's nodding her head as well. And Jacob, you're new, right? Tell, tell me your name from Mexico. Your name? Echo. Echo. Okay, I said Jacob, but it's it's about, it's about that. I have a son named Jacob, right? Goes well. Taking care of Mexico on the plane, absolutely. One you know, was going to be here, period, end of story because we're about to take this thing to the next level. Then we've got Dr. Paul. He could be the ultimate green. This man knows the details. What time did you get here today, Paul? Uh, 10,000 steps before 6 a.m. 10,000 steps before 6 a.m. He was here setting, making sure everything was done. He and Delina dotting every I, crossing every T, Nancy as well. They're kind, kind of in the background, but... And Josh, and Josh, yes, Josh, I can't forget about you, right? And, and this has been seamless. I, I've lectured at a number, number of conferences, over 30 years of conferences. I kind of have the easy job. I just go up and talk about what I know. And I've spent plenty of time learning it before I got there, so I'm not too worried about that. I like Deepa's comment to Sachin. Gosh, I, I would be nervous if I did that. Well, not Sachin, right? He, he just is connected so beautifully. And I love how you did that, right? You just walk up, you get a feel for the room. I won't say you read the room, you get a feel for the room, that heart-to-heart -heart connection. And you share things as well as anybody. But we're getting both a hardware and a software upgrade with Organo. What's the hardware? We've got all the fabulous 50, all the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, proteins, carbohydrates, fat, fiber, and water in doses that make a difference to human health. We've got 430 unique molecules, 79 of which are antimicrobial, can block the replication of HIV. Uh, actually, by March of 2020, it was known that if people in China that had bad COVID got traditional Chinese medicine, they didn't specifically call out Ganoderma, they improved the survivability of those patients by over 27x. Now, I didn't say 27%. Over 2,700% is the probability that COVID sufferers would survive if they got traditional Chinese medicine in China early in 2020 when it came out. 
how powerful is this stuff? And then they found out later, yeah, it's really powerful for COVID straight up, and it can even kill MRSA, another really bad bug. And you know, you start looking at PubMed and Shannon, I won't, I won't get non-compliant, but there's over, <laughs> there's over 3,000 PubMed studies, right? You start looking. Uh, and by the way, I didn't say Arganoderm would do that, but I will say we've got USDA certified, naturally grown Ganoderma in our coffee. is tested for herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, molds, mycotoxins, heavy metals, microplastics, and we come up cleanest out there, right? So we're going to continue to build at the speed of trust. So we get that hardware and we get that good software. Where's that software upgrade coming from? It's the energy. It's the message. And when you grow a plant in a way that it has to fend for itself, it develops a very powerful immune system. When you grow a plant in a plastic bag, this, uh, was it Diane that said that, right? Or maybe Satchin or both. It doesn't have to do much. Everything's right there. And if you don't have to do much, as Jim Rohn would say, you don't have to become much. So I want the Ganoderma that had to fight for the nutrients. I want the Ganoderma that had to fight to grow. I want the Ganoderma that had to be strong enough to survive all the elements, not that had everything hammered. And when I consume that one and it goes in my body, it gives me all of that wonderful deliciousness. Then we've got Marta. And Sylvester. So Marta, her story is beyond amazing. It's the first miracle organo baby that I heard of. And I don't know how many we have now. Do we, is there any way we could even quantify that? I know I had a call with Africa, and Africa said they were aware of more than 50 different organo babies. 50 different women that were told they couldn't conceive. And then all of a sudden, they have a beautiful baby. How could that be? Healthy bodies want to reproduce. It's actually the ultimate biologic purpose. So you start looking at all these people that are infertile. It's just a sign that we become a very sick world. But Marta proved it. Many other people proved it. You can't get a whole lot healthier healthy enough to reproduce in some cases. I was talking to Sylvester at Dr. Paul's, and by the way, does anybody know, did Sylvester sponsor Marta? Does anybody know that? Who knows? He didn't sponsor her. Is he on the second level? Is she on the second level? No, is she on the third level? Is she on the fourth level? Fifth level. So, how many of you would like a diamond in your organization? I can tell you what it does for your body. But understand, Sylvester knew someone. Who knew someone? Who knew someone? Who knew someone? Who just happened to share a cup of coffee with Marta. And now she's married to Balaz. They have three amazing boys. And they weren't supposed to have any. They're going to have more on the way. But Sylvester's first business, ready for this, was coffee. Now, Sylvester has an extreme advantage over all of us. I'll call it an advantage. You might not have thought of it at the time. Hungary was communist when he was born. So, as Les Brown would say, you got to be hungry. <laughs> and he grew up hungry. So, at 20, he started a coffee business. And then the government took that, right? And then it was automobile. And then were you selling Giorgio Armani jackets online, right? That's why he always looks so nice. He's connected to the, to the fashion industry. And then he happened to be in a pretty tough circumstance when Organo came into his world. Now, I heard Sylvester say this, and I don't think I'm going to agree with it. He said, I'm not a clever guy. I think I heard you say that today on the stage. You're one of the most clever guys I know. Sylvester is smart enough to keep it simple. 
Satya, what did da Vinci say is the ultimate sophistication? Simplicity is. Here's what Confucius said long before da Vinci. Confucius said, progress is the complication of simplicity. So how many of you have been busy making progress in your business? Complicating it. Oh, I promise you, I've complicated it to the nth degree. Some of us can do this. My most recent book on network marketing, and I've either read or listened to over 150 of them, is called No Degree Required, The Ivy League Method of Network Marketing. And it's by a Harvard attorney. And she's got uh, an email. Uh, I'm sorry I was so stupid at screwedupnetworkmarketing.com or something like that. And she, she says, she can't believe how bad she messed up trying to share a niche originally. Trying to convince. No, no, no. We don't convince. We sort. That's the phrase. Experts sort. Amateurs convince. And she says, I'll have conversations with people. And if they don't see the model, I just move on. You know, now, it's easier than ever. How many of you might have thought network marketing had some scam component to it originally? I sure did. That's why I stayed away from it for a long period of time. But now you can just ask chat GPT or any other AI, is network marketing a scam? What do you think it's going to say? Of course not. It's a legitimate business model in over 100 countries doing over $200 billion a year in sales. With over a million people smart enough to use that as their side hustle. Is it legit? You bet. Is there a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it? Yeah. <laughs> of course. And I, I learned a, a line at the last mastermind. We all look, learn how to do it badly at first. Who was great right out of the gate at network marketing? Raise your hand if you were just an instant success. But you're still here, aren't you? There's another quote. Anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. So. What do you do when you do something badly? Hopefully, allow yourself to enjoy it and learn from it. Sometimes I win, sometimes I learn. Mr. Abbey, always powerful to hear you, to hear your story. Did you complicate it when you went blue diamond so fast, when you were suiting up and going to work? Did you complicate it, or did you just go to work? He just went to work. And how do you preface that? What does suit up mean? Well, if you're Abby, it might be put on the full armor of God, but I, I don't think I've ever seen that guy not looking sharp. I, I just don't think I've ever seen him not looking sharp. He's dressed like a champ. He's got this great energy. He's got this vibrant smile. When I see, you know, when I've talked to a bunch of people, I didn't meet Nelson Mandela, but I, I thought if I did, he'd probably be like Abby. Just listen and be smart and be wise and be the last person to speak. But way back then, I don't think we knew a fraction of what we know about Ganoderma, about really about anything. Think about how fast knowledge is expanding. Don't let knowledge get in the way. Suit up, be nicely groomed, smell nice, have a big smile, have epic energy, and know what you're sharing has absolutely no equal anywhere in the world. And when you know that, suddenly this business is not challenging. Pray for people to help. One of my great mentors said this, be of service and you'll always have someone to serve. You're not going to be looking for something to do if you're trying to be of service. Then we've got Diane. It was her vision to have this event, her vision to have the Chua family here. How powerful is that? 
And I remember that, that conversation so far back. Diane remembers that I got time back, but she asked me, she says, look, I stepped away from practice. I've got a son now. Any, any idea of how I can get some patients fast is some, somewhat of how the question went. And so I asked Diane, I said, what do you think is easier, getting a new nutrition patient or sharing a cup of coffee? And she laughed. She says, is that a serious question? I said, oh, yeah, of course it is. She said, well, obviously sharing a cup of coffee. And I said, good, let me share one with you. And what, what comment did I get? I don't drink coffee. <laughs> How about tea? So we made her a green tea. It's always good to have all the samples on hand. Because you never know, as Dr. Paul said, that was actually B.J. Palmer, you never know what you may think, say, or do, and how it may impact millions tomorrow. Now, when Diane said, all right, if you're in, I'm in, I realized that she got it. Every once in a while, you meet someone who you can see the, the switch legitimately flipped. Some people will see this and they'll go, okay, I get it. Okay, a lot of people see that. But Diane got it. She absolutely got it. I, I remember right after that conversation, I called Kathy and I said, hey, I just signed up our first diamond. Now we were emerald at the time. I had some, I had an emerald and a couple of rubies on the team. Diane hadn't even got a customer yet. So how did I know she was gonna be our first diamond? It's just who she is. It's how she shows up. Now, I think if I just introduced her and let her go, we, you know, we probably wouldn't all be here, would we? But I gave her little assignments every week. Diane, listen to this podcast. Diane, read this book. Diane, check this out. And maybe we were doing it for a few months and. She said, I don't know, it's not going like I thought it would. Okay, what's going on? Well, my first month I made $5. Congratulations. <laughs> what do you mean, congratulations? The business is working. Let it build. So she said, what do, what do I need to do? I said, well, there's an event in Vegas next month, Eric Worre, GoPro Recruiting Mastery. Well, what I didn't know, I didn't know that Diane's financial circumstance was, was pretty dire. I actually didn't know, I had no clue. But she really couldn't even afford to go to Vegas. And going to Vegas, she had her expenses paid, she had $50 for food for three days. But if you notice how Diane shows up, she shows up ready, willing, and able. She shows up multiple levels above where she currently is, or maybe even where she wants to be, and someone saw her and, and said, you must be a VIP. She went, what, what's a VIP? Well, come follow me. And they gave her a $3,000 upgrade. They put a bracelet on her wrist. She got to go into the special room. She got food and drinks and special seating for three straight days. Why? Because she was ready. What's coming your way? What are you ready for? Isn't that interesting? It's an infinite universe. This is an infinite opportunity. What are you ready for? What are you willing to let in? I don't know that Diane knew that she was ready at that moment, except she's always ready. And she left there and never looked back. And when she went sapphire, she always requalified. When you start looking at these ranks, most people that hit a rank don't requalify. That's not like that happen. Whatever you did to get there, keep doing it. Now it's said that there are three and only three things. Well, I'll, I'll finish with the three and only three, but I'll go with two and only two before the three and only three. One of my favorite authors is Andy Andrews. He wrote a book called The Seven Decisions. I highly recommend it. Actually, I, I read 11 of his books and they're all really quite good. But he says there's two things required for change. People, 
don't have to hit rock bottom. There's all kinds of myths about change. People need two things. Number one, what's in it for me? And where's the reasonable amount of social proof for it? Well, what's in it for you? A multi-billion dollar market where we have the premier product that has won awards that no one can compete with to the tune of over two billion cups a day is what the market is. What's in it for you? Any piece of that that you want. Part number two, what's the social proof? This room is. Look at how many people got on stage, how many sapphires, uh, how many VIPs, how many platinums, how many star achievers, how many diamonds, how many award cruise winners, etc. The proof is in the room. And it said it takes three and only three things to win. First thing is passion. You can either be passionate about the product, passionate about the opportunity, or both. That will get you there. Passion is going to bring in more beautiful energy, more people. I think there was a preacher that once said, you know, he became on fire and people came for miles to watch him burn. Someone who's excited, that's profoundly attractive. Number two, you need a leader that can show you the way. I think I heard Christelle say at least half a dozen times, connect with people that are plugged in. If you're not near the fire, you're not going to be very warm. And if you're not very warm, people are not going to be too attractive. You want to be on fire. And you want to be able to make a good introduction to a tool or a person. You got to try this coffee. It's amazing. What's amazing about it? Tell me after you drink it. I will plant a few seeds. When I sample someone, about 30 minutes after you drink this, I want you to look around. You're probably going to see colors are brighter. You're probably going to have a clearer thinking. Sound may be more clear.